analytical modeling, how to know what works. When we're making decisions about complex objects, systems, data, financials, life, the world, how do we know what's right? What might work, what may fit, or what's best? Well, one way would be to try a bunch of different things to see what happens and hope it all works out, but that's inefficient and it's wasteful. And plus, there's a better way. It's called analytical modeling. This isn't a business class, clearly, but I've said a lot on this channel about the need to break it all down, your world and yourself, and I'm not sure if I've said enough about the need to put it all back together and the difficulty of doing so skillfully. So how do you do that? How the hell do you put a picture together from such a disjointed, disconnected, and scrambled mess of information and data? How do you put your world, your life, and a system or an object back together once you've torn them apart, torn them down, through questioning and probing? Well, assuming you have a handle on the individual components and pieces of your life, your world, the object, or a system, you want to start by building a model that will replace this construct that you've just dismantled. When I was an analyst, I wasn't satisfied, I couldn't be satisfied with just understanding data and noticing patterns. I had to make predictions and draw conclusions about the data and the patterns that I saw, just so that someone else could inform their own decision making, which is the whole point of my job, the whole point of analysis, right? And the same is true with knowledge and information about the world and life. It does us no good just to know it, we need to use it. So to make better use of the complex pieces and components of information and data, what I would do after analyzing things and noticing what I thought was important, noticing patterns or any trends, what I would do is I would build a model of whatever I was trying to understand more thoroughly so that I could look at it from multiple different angles so that I could run through multiple scenarios about it, you know, play with it in a way. I would construct a replica of a real life object scenario business case usually in Microsoft Excel, and then I would run different hypotheticals and real examples through it just to see what popped out, to see what came out of it, to see what it told me. And the results usually gave me more information about the data, the scenario being modeled, and if I was wrong about something or if there was a flaw in my thinking or in the information and data I was using. It's smart to do this, especially in business, because of the risk involved. We want to know what will happen if certain conditions are met or if certain events occur beforehand. For example, we can model the profitability of a delivery business in a world where our entire delivery fleet is fully utilized, but fuel costs are rising. That will impact our business in some way and our profitability, and we want to know the effect ahead of time. You don't have to do this. You could just wing it. You could just adjust on the fly and hope everything works out in the long run, in the end. But when you can't account for conditions ahead of an action or an event, I think you should do so if it matters. And even though you can't do so perfectly, you can reduce your risk and increase your likelihood of a successful outcome by modeling. In existential terms, this means you can increase your chances of putting together a life that is right for you, that fits you, and reduce the risk of carrying a fundamentally flawed worldview. Modeling business scenarios is encouraged, but it's optional. But with something as complex as a life plan and a worldview, I don't really see any option there. I think it's essential. It's just that with the data generated in business, it's more apparent how modeling helps. Life just doesn't generate data in such obvious ways. Building a testable model of a life, a worldview, or a structure helps us understand the structural integrity and usefulness of a thing by making it smaller and less complex. The time and energy we spend testing on models will always be less than the full-size real-world thing or else we don't make them. Because of our ability to test and experiment, we can know far more about what may be best, what may work, what may fit, and what may happen in the real world that we're trying to approximate. You really don't want to build a business, a skyscraper, a life, or a worldview, only to find out that they're unstable and poorly constructed once you're inhabiting them. You want to know whether or not they'll meet your needs and whether they can stand up to the environment that they'll be in long before you begin living with them in real life, with the full-size real-world thing. Even though life plans and worldviews aren't made of data in the same way that a business plan is, the process of building the model is the same no matter whether the information is quantifiable or qualifiable. The process would go like this. You would simply build a condensed, small, simple representative of the thing that you're trying to approximate in the real world with as few components as possible, and then you run data through it, or hypotheticals, just to see what happens, to see if any abnormalities pop out. And if they do, you may have hit on an area of interest, and if nothing stands out, even after throwing extreme data at the model, you may be onto something that you may want to consider building in the real world. You just have to check because a model is only as good as the information and components that's composed from and really the way that those components and information are assembled and also the data and scenarios that we run through the model. If something is missing, incorrect, or added unnecessarily, we will taint our model and skew the results that we get, which makes for faulty decision making. So how simple can we make a model? What do we need in there? Well, when modeling a life, we'll need to include all major areas of concern like work, health, education, 
knowledge, information, community, communication, relationships, guiding principles. We want to include everything necessary once again, but we don't want to include everything possible because that just creates informational noise and it makes our model too complex and too unwieldy to understand and use. The whole point of modeling is to shrink something down to a testable size and when things occur over a vast duration of time or they involve more variables than human mind can conceive of or handle at once, we must simplify and shrink or else we must wait to see what happens in the real world, in real life, and hope that it's good. Of course, how much we simplify depends on our resources and our tolerance and threshold for accuracy. Also, the more static and quantifiable a thing is, the better our predictive power, usually. A good example of a complex static model is a scaled-down version of an airplane in a wind tunnel. And because it is static, we can add back in great detail to ensure predictive power but it's costly and time-consuming to do so. When it comes to understanding a life and a world, I created a simple model of a human being as a cell in a global body of human cells, which really comprises the global civilization we inhabit. And with this, I can easily see whether my discontent and suffering is a result of something that I need to address inside of me, out in my world, or something that I need to work with other people to help address. This is a very rough explanation, and I'll touch more on this in the future, but modeling is not that hard. It just sounds hard. It sounds challenging at first until you wrap your head around it. It's easy to do, and we all do it at some point in our life, whether we're children or adults, but the challenge is to do it skillfully. Knowing how to approximately represent something that contains enough information to be predictive, but not so much that we have difficulty using the approximate representation is an art, but it can be learned. If you think this is something you're interested in or would be useful to you or someone else, make sure you're subscribed. I'll be talking a lot more about model building, mainly mental model building in the future. Don't forget to like this video if you like it, and there's a link in the description for more information about analytical modeling if you want to know more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.